Recently, I've been trying to recreate this slow shutter effect inside DaVinci Resolve just as a preset. And right now I'm trying to grab some shots that are identical to each other or as close as I can. So getting two shots, one that's slow shutter inside the camera and then one that's just regular speed and then taking that inside Resolve and trying to match them up as close as I can using the effects inside Resolve. So you can head down to the description below to download the preset, but I will say you'll have to rerun the studio version of Resolve because I'm going to probably use motion blur and motion trails and some other effects. Uh, so once we have the footage, hopefully I can grab enough before the sun goes down, and then we're going to hop into Resolve and try to recreate it. And uh, I'll share my best settings and all that stuff uh, later on. So let's go shoot some footage. All right, let's try the classic Jake Fru shot. You gotta wash your paws, dude. Look at that. Are you kidding? Go wash your paws. I'm pretty stoked with how everything turned out for this plugin. And before we dive in, I'm gonna mention one more time that you need to be running the studio version of DaVinci Resolve to be able to use this. So once you've installed the preset, let's dive in to DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so I have two clips that you saw in the intro and I'm just gonna go through it here now because this is a perfect clip that I would throw away in an actual edit to be like, this isn't really anything. But if I had shot it in slow shutter in camera, it would have been a lot more usable for like a transition or something. So I just want to show you basically what the plugin does and what you can do with the controls. By default, I've narrowed in on the settings that I think will work across like various clips. Uh, and I'm really happy with how it turned out, but it can get super render heavy. So that's why I want to show you how to actually use the plugin. So let's turn everything off here. The first thing I want to note is if we come to like a slow shutter shot, you can see that because of a slow shutter, nothing really comes into like crystal clear focus. So, which is why I usually start with a pre blur. So by default, I have this set to one and depending on which axis you're moving on, like for this, I'm moving left to right. So I would really just want the one axis to be blurred. So if you take the X axis, you could blur that. But if you're moving up and down, I would probably blur a little bit more in the vertical axis. That's something to note. So right now, maybe I'll leave that at two. So it's just a little bit of blur, but it gives us a good base to then kind of smear the frames from. So from there, a big help and something that's also GPU heavy is the motion blur. So if I just turn this to 50, you'll be able to see kind of immediately like what this is gonna be doing. So, so you can already see there's a bunch of motion blur in comparison to if I turn that off, turn it back on, you can see it. And that's only 50%, you can go all the way to 100. And now let's just compare the frames here. So we've only done motion blur and a pre-blur and they look pretty similar. But because it's so smooth and we're not losing any frames here, just looks like an effect still. So the big thing here is dropping frames because you can see here, it's kind of like a little bit choppy and that's because we were shooting at like one eighth of a second. So if I drop five frames, you know, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting a little choppy and this might not be playing back at real time, somewhere between like four and 10 frames is good to drop, but I've left this slider that you can kind of experiment on your own. So I'm gonna leave the drop frames at four. Okay, and then kind of the secret sauce here is the motion trails. So once we turn on the motion trails, it, it basically is like an echo effect that takes the last frame and blends it with the next frame. 
and that really mimics the the slow shutter from an in camera so the trail length is basically like how long the streak will be let's get a frame that actually has a streak here let's just turn the motion blur back to 50 so you can see the the trail length so right now i'm at seven if i bump that up all the way to 50 you can see that it really just smears it and then if i drop this down to say five you know i find it to be a good mix if you lower your motion blur a bit uh, and just use the trail length to kind of compensate uh, i think it actually works out so in this case i think maybe just leave it at seven um, and then the drop off is basically how long that echo effect will happen so zero is, is obviously like immediate and you can kind of see in the frame here so zero and then if i leave it all the way to one it's really just not going away at all it'll take an entire entire second there to fade away so i have it at like 0.25 and i think that's a good good sweet spot so once i have the effect in a spot where i like i'll render in place that way i can have it with the effects baked in in my edit and like color grade and stuff on top of that when I'm doing this, I like to duplicate the clip on top of itself. So if I need to go back and change any settings, I can do that and then render in place again. While this is rendering, this is a great time to tell you that I actually started a Discord and you can join it in the description below. In the Discord, I actually released this plugin early and I was looking for people to test it to see if it needed the studio version, how heavy was it to run on your machine. And there's a place that you can come hang out, share your own work if you use presets or you want feedback or you're having trouble installing presets and everything else in between so if you want to come hang and talk about everything video editing and filmmaking come join we'll be stoked to have you there okay let's wrap this up let's take a look now that this is the in-camera one that was shot and how close did we get i said it's looking pretty good i think maybe the pre-blur was a little too harsh but i think that looks really solid and to be fair, I don't think I'd be able to tell. Because I feel like that example lends itself so good to slow shutter, I also brought another clip in here, which is just skateboarding, and I've cut out a piece right here. So it's obviously shot in regular speed. And all I'm gonna do is take this one clip, add slow shutter, I just double clicked it on it there. I'm just gonna leave it at its base settings, and I'm gonna render in place. Okay, so let's see what the base settings look like. I think that looks great. So that's it. I hope it's super simple for you to use. And if you have any questions or concerns or have trouble using it, hit the Discord and uh, yeah, we can chat about it. But uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.